everybody, it's Gypsy. Uh, today, I wanted to talk to you guys um, about this Native American concept I read about in a book, and I just find it fascinating. Now, I know many of you are not going to agree with me on it, uh, and I know many other um, older cultures from the past uh, have done this, and I always liked it. Um, I think it's a great idea, and I think it's the best thing for us. Many people don't agree with me on this because we are so stuck in the matrix, so stuck in the system, we can see no other way to live. But in the past, there were other ways that worked uh, very good. Now, before you ask, well, if they're so good, why aren't they still existing? Well, let's take the Native Americans, for instance. They were overtaken. And their ways of life were very intentionally obliterated, and they held on to what they can. But being so, um, yeah, I want to say Europe, Europeanized, um, that that uh, concept in their way of life uh, was taken away, and now they're stuck in the matrix too. Now, before I get started, I want to make it quite clear that this is um, not a Marxist or communist uh, concept at all. It is still capitalism. Yeah, and I used to kind of be against capitalism because I thought it promoted greed. Um, it can, depending on your personality and how you handle it, depending on how mature you are. Let's put it that way. Yes. Now, this concept that I read in a book, I think it was in Braiding Sweetgrass, um, is referred to these days as a gifting economy. Now, I know you guys have heard me touch on this from time to time. I'd like to speak of it more in depth. And the reason I am so for this is because when you have a financial system, that system um, is used to control the populace, okay? The entire planet is controlled by our financial system all across the globe. It is so deep and complicated, none of us could really understand it, but it is becoming more clear to us these days, okay? So we really need to be cognizant of it, okay? And we have to find a different way out. Now, you hear about buying up gold and silver, which I was warned back in the 80s by my aunt's ex-husband to start buying it up. Well, being a single mother, I, I couldn't afford to buy up gold or silver. And now, you know, I'm not the healthiest person in the world, and I'm on disability. So I still can't buy up gold and silver. And now you have cryptocurrency, which I really don't understand. But I did speak to another vendor who uses it. And he told, I, I said, well, I, I don't really understand it. I said, first of all, it, it can't be tracked. He, go to, he goes, oh, yes, it's tracked. And he says, what you do, it's more of like investing. Um, you hang on to it. And so I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense. And even if we do get to the point, you know, I know people are using it to purchase some things. How do we keep that from leading to greed and control? I'm sure now at the beginning it would be a good thing, but I see in the distant future that it could end up just like our current financial system. So that concerns me. Now, what I mean by gifting economy, and in this book it says this is where the term Indian giver comes from. So I'm going to start with that and, and expand upon it. Back in Native American culture, Somebody would give somebody a gift. Okay, when we give somebody something, it, it's out of the goodness of our heart. And that person would um, keep it and use it and hang on to it until someone else came along who then needed whatever it was they were given. And you know, when you use your intuition, which the Native Americans were very good at doing, they were very, very spiritual, um, your intuition will tell you, okay, um, it's time to pass it on, and this is the person who needs it. It's kind of like, for those of you, you who use crystals, 
is sometimes you lose a crystal and you can't find it. And you realize you lost that crystal because, one, you don't need it anymore. And the person who finds it is the one who does. Or sometimes you meet someone or you're talking to someone and you just feel this very strong um, intuitive message that you need to pass one of your crystals onto this person. Oops, spirit got too close to the camera again. Hi everyone, it's Gypsy, and I'd like to remind you that my printed merchandise with my original artwork is again available at gypsywitchcreations.com. I am currently focusing on my decentralized American Eagle line. I currently have mugs, water bottles, bumper stickers, and magnets, and soon t-shirts will be available. Okay, so the gifting economy works very similar to that. Um, from what I read in this book. So that's where the term Indian giver came from. Um, now the Americans um, used it in a very uh, derogatory manner, but it's not. It was a very loving and um, giving system. Now, that being said, um, cultures like, and this is all across the globe, it used to be like this, so many use this, um, a gifting economy. Uh, and you all know I'm against big government. I've talked about this. I believe in smaller communities that are self-governed by the people. Okay? So say you have your community, and we can consider it like a Native American tribe. And many people are using that term now, tribe, finding my tribe. Okay? So say you have that community. Each and every person in that community was born with a gift and or talent which they can communicate they can contribute to the community i have talked about this many 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 times everyone everybody is born with something they can contribute whether you realize it or not right now i mean yeah i don't want to go into the spiritual contributions and those are very most important the people who you think cannot contribute are the ones who are contributing uh, spiritually on spiritual lessons, etc. Anyways, so we all have talents and abilities that we can contribute. And this is by divine design. So that we have everything we need. Now, when, when this planet was created, it was created so that every being on this planet, including humans, had everything they need. To survive we never should have had to pay for anything I mean there are natural natural resources natural meaning coming from the Creator okay um, nobody has a mono nobody should have a monopoly on that because you didn't create it it was our Creator who did okay so with that being said you have all these people who do contribute to the community so it's just contributing, and I know that kind of sounds communistic, but it's not because no money is involved. Nobody runs, there's no one person who runs the show. The entire community does. And you're contributing, say you're a seamstress, you put in that, a cook, you know, cooks, you know, probably more than one who have these talents. Um, they contribute, you have artisans, you have um, architecture, you have those, what is that I'm trying to think of? Those who are good with um, inventing and coming up with, with technology or mechanical, right? People like that, then you have mechan I mean, everybody, everybody has something to contribute. Okay? And that's how the economy would work. Now, I know everybody worries about, well, what about the lazy people? In my humble opinion, people who are considered lazy aren't really because of the way our society is designed their talent and I'm speaking as an artist let me tell you I know how this feels um, their talent is really not accepted in society uh, what, what they were born to do they're always told that well you can't make money with it etc and then they're expected to go out and work at a job that's not meant for them and they hate that's how you end up with lazy people some people throw in the towel and say, I give up. And they'll just sit there. They'll they don't care. Some people are making a point. We need to change that. So when you have a gifting economy, a gifting community, everybody's contributing. And the people 
who were once considered lazy, all of a sudden, their talents and abilities are valuable. Value, in my, for someone like me, has, it's, it's not a monetary thing. It has nothing to do with money. So that person would be able to contribute. So I'm not seeing very much how there could be uh, someone who is lazy. But should there be? Yes, there could be. There should be some kind of consequence. Now, I'm not talking about something severe like jail or beating the shit out of somebody. I don't agree with that shit. But something like that. So this way you are running your own community without money. But everybody, and yes, it sounds like a commune. So what? Where do you think the word community comes from? Commune. Community. Yeah. Right. Now, a commune to me has more of an ideology of like um, religious. Um, for me, I would not want a religious community or a spiritual community, even though I'm very spiritual. I would want a community where everybody is free to be themselves and have their own thoughts and ideas and opinions. And, yeah, an open community where we all contribute. And we wouldn't, and yes, there'd be people who knew, knew how to do roads and everything. Um, and they contribute that. So to me, it's capitalism without money. Because once you get that money in there, everybody's being controlled. And there will be somebody at the top controlling everything down to the bottom of the pyramid. So that's why I like, to, I like a gifting economy. Um, it would take a while to get in place, and at my age, I doubt I would live to see it, but I would see it from the spirit realm, and I'd be like, yay, everybody. Um, what else was I going to say on that? Oh, and another thing, you know, the Native Americans, they did this when the, within their own tribes. But what I thought was really cool in this book, and this is really right up my alley, they would actually have a, a trade fair with other tribes. They'd eat, meet up, have a big celebration and party with other uh, Native American tribes. It was a big to-do, and they would make trades because some tribes specialized more in one thing or another. Um, I'm sorry, I thought I saw a spirit standing out my window, so I looked. Um, could have been just an illusion. Um, yeah, I don't consider seeing spirits an illusion. Um, right, so, you know, they would get together with other tribes to trade um, goods and services without money. Right. So, like, within the tribe, you're doing contributionism. But when they would meet with other tribes, it was a trade. Which I think is a beautiful, beautiful thing. No money. If there's no money, you can't control anybody. Yes, and you know... The little ones were taken care of. Everybody was home with their families in the tribe. So children were not sent to um, brainwashing factories. Excuse me, I meant schools and daycare. Sorry, I slipped. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's coming. Um, nobody really, you know, they went to go hunt and stuff like that and gather um, food. Uh, and stuff, but a lot of times, like mothers had their babies on their backs and stuff. Uh, the family stuck together, the tribe stuck together. You didn't have to leave, you weren't separated from your family. Therefore, nobody can, can you know, take over control of your family either. It's a very, it's a very loving and productive, loving and productive. So, to me, it's capitalism without money and it's freedom. It's freedom. I always say, I wish I could create my art and just give it away. With the economy the way it is, people come up to my booth and they look at my stuff and they'll be like, oh my God, you are such a good artist. All of this is so beautiful. But they don't buy anything. Because they can't. The economy is so bad. The dollar is nearly worthless. I mean, come on. If I could afford it, I would give it to that person. I would. I wish I could just make my wares, create my art, make beautiful things to make people feel good. Do readings for free if I could. I would. I would just love to contribute my talents and abilities. And to me, that is my dream for a better world. Is to be able to do that. 
But look at my hands. I'm an old woman now. I'm not going to be here to see it unless we hustle and get it done. I would love to see that. I would love the day when I could just give my stuff away. But I can't afford to because i got to eat. Anyways, you guys, food for thought. Give that some thought. I just thought when I read that book, that was so beautiful. So beautiful. So I'm going to leave you with that. Blessed be and make it a joyful one.